Good morning, everyone. It's so great to be here this morning. Um, for those of you that don't know me yet, my name's Danielle. And with my husband, Cameron, we moved to Edinburgh last summer, started coming along to Cornerstone. And it really is my pleasure to share with you today a wee bit about how and why I became a Christian. Um, so kind of quickly zooming through my early years, I grew up going to church with my mum for the first seven or so years of my life. But one day she just decided not to go anymore. Um, we had had a few kind of sudden deaths in our family and she just didn't want to engage with Christianity anymore. So growing up, I adopted her beliefs, passionately arguing the atheist arguments in school. Um, but one summer holiday, when I was about 15 years old, I went to a skate park. And whenever I've shared the story in the past, it's usually what gets the most laughs, if you know me. I have not, um, probably never will skate in my whole life. Um, but that day I showed up at that park by my house. So there was this huge group of young people there. And it turned out that I knew a few of them, but I was kind of confused as to how they knew one another. Um, and it turned out they were all Christians and they invited me along to a youth event that they were holding in the neighboring town. But I politely declined, sure in my beliefs, but that night I couldn't stop thinking about it. And the next day I went back to the park and ended up going to all of their events that week. There was one every single evening. And the last evening event, I heard someone else's testimony, the story of God working in their life. And I decided I wanted that too. So kind of looking back now, I don't know what I knew, why I really decided to become a Christian or really anything. I just knew that there were young people that were passionate about something and I wanted to be involved in that. To many, that may seem that I was a little naive and perhaps I was, but over 10 years later, I can see how I've gradually come to know and love God and serve him. So I'm gonna share with you about just one certain moment that really showed me who God is and how he loves me. Um, so a few years ago in my third year at university, uh, it was my first semester there in that year and everything was just different to how it had been before. I remember not really wanting to see groups of people, um, something I'd never really experienced before. And as that semester went on and on, it seemed to get worse and worse. Not one kind of bad event really happened at any point, but I would describe every day as like a wall in front of me, made up of bricks of different things, kind of like this. And, and together they just seemed unbeatable. I struggled to get out of bed, to move, to, to go to things and different people nudged me to see a doctor. Uh, I eventually went and they kind of brushed me off, sent me to student services um, in the university who also didn't seem to see any issues. Um, and then I met with someone from my church and they just called it a phase. So I just felt really confused. And in the end started deflecting all my feelings onto the church, feeling quite angry as to why they did things the way that they did them. Um, I said I was a Christian on the outside and I did all these outward Christian things, um, but to be quite honest, I felt a bit like a fraud. I was deflecting all of these things I felt onto God and the church, but I didn't care to seek him. I was angry with God. Why did I have to do all of this stuff for a cause that I was becoming more and more apathetic towards? But as you can see, all of these things were very much about me. I chose to focus on myself, my own kind of suffering, the things I was experiencing. Um, and I was very much in this selfish bubble. And just, but despite isolating myself from everything, I still desired the input of someone else or something else in my life. I had a deep longing for support. Um, the person that I'd met with before in my church, the one that uh, told me I was going through a phase, kind of made me lose all faith in ever finding that relationship. Um, and then one day at my church at university, they advertised this thing which was called intergenerational speed dating. Um, and I think I was one of the only students to sign up and did so straight away. So I went along for coffee with these two old, older ladies from church and a PhD student. And I soon realized that these ladies really love to talk. They love to talk and laugh and cry. And sometimes they did all three at the same time. And um, there were these real gritty things going on in their lives. But despite that, they spoke um, so openly about the hope they had um, in God and in Jesus um, through these situations. 
So we met again and after that time, uh, the PhD student was like, hey, we should meet up, just the two of us, so that we can just get to know each other a bit better. I didn't get much chance to introduce myself with the older ladies talking so much. Not that I um, despise them for that, but um, yeah, so we met up with this other student and then one day she suggested that we read the Bible together, something that I hadn't really been doing at all. So one day we sat outside of Costa Coffee in the high street in St. Andrews um, in the very, very, very early spring, reading out loud the whole of the book of Hosea to each other. And I thought, this woman is mental. It was so cold. It was one of those days that looks beautiful, but it's actually not warm at all. And we were sat reading this crazy book to one another in the main street. Um, and most of the times we've read the Bible together after this, I felt quite overwhelmed. I didn't understand a lot what was happening. But despite that, my friend showed me real grace. She didn't make me feel stupid, but showed me instead how this old book that we were reading had real significance in her life. Hosea is a book about how God's love and mercy are more powerful than our sin. So her life had been transformed because of who Jesus is. And how does she know who Jesus is? Because of the Bible. And then how was my life to be transformed? Well, by knowing who Jesus is. The Bible does this helpful thing of showing us who God is and who we are because of that. The Christians believe that the Bible is full of things that God says to his people and that those things are still relevant for us today. Did I believe that before? No, not totally. But did I understand who God was the more I've read the Bible? Yes, I was beginning to. And did I understand humanity more than before I read the Bible? Yes. The more I read, the more I wanted to know. So as I reflect on that moment and over the past couple of years, I've learned from the Bible that God works throughout the ages for both the good of humans and for his glory. Um, my story is obviously not the whole story, but I'm confident that it's part of God's whole story. Um, what I'm trying to get across, I suppose, is what I'm learning in my own life is that Jesus isn't distant or abstract. He doesn't just want us to obey or follow blindly, but he wants me to have the kind of life that only he can give, which is one of real joy, real identity, real hope, um, all of which I see mapped out throughout the Bible. So I would encourage you um, to just really pay attention to what's being said this morning um, if you haven't explored this for yourself um, before. And that's a bit of my story. Mm -hmm.